Hi there. Today I want to talk to you about yin and yang. Yin and yang. Sometimes you might hear people say yin and yang. It's the same thing, yin and yang. So I want to tell you a story. When I was younger, um, a lot younger, when I was young, I had an earring and um, the earring on this side and the earring was a stud. And it had that symbol in. It looks like two fishes with dots in their eyes, black and white. Now, people often call that symbol the yin-yang symbol. In fact, it's, it, it's the Tai Chi sign. It means Tai Chi. It's a sign attributed to Tai Chi. So that's interesting, isn't it? And uh, Tai Chi is all about yin and yang. So where does yin and yang come from? Well, about 500 BC. So at the time in China, there was what people called the Hundred Schools. This was a really great explosion of philosophical thought. Um, it's around the Axial Age, the age where there was a similar explosion of philosophical thought in Greece that you might be more familiar with. Um, in China, you had people like Confucius and Lao Tzu and uh, others, Mao Tzu and uh, lots of others. Anyway, 100 schools. And at this point, we begin to see the concepts of yin and yang emerging and being written about. Now, uh, they're featured, in fact, they feature quite heavily in a book which became really enshrined around that period. Some people say Confucius uh, wrote parts of it, but uh, nobody really knows for sure. But anyway, this book is the I Ching, the very famous book, the I Ching. So it talks about yin and yang. Now, at that point, yin and yang were terms which meant uh, particular things. And I'm going to explain how you got onto it. Many of the philosophical schools, their interest was in the Tao. The Tao. Now, uh, this really means the way, the path, okay? So uh, you want to be on the right path or you just want to be part of the path or have the path. It's, a, it's, it's not only a philosophical but a religious concept. Now, uh, how do you get with the Tao, uh, you achieve a balance. You get into harmony with it and you get into harmony by balancing. And what you must do is balance one side and another, balance things in your life. You must be, um, yeah, you must get into balance. Now, sorts of things you're balancing described yin and yang. Yang hard, hard, yin, soft. So you're balancing hard and soft. You don't want to be too hard. This is not a good way to live your life. You don't want to be too soft. This is not a good way to live your life. You want to be balanced. You want to find this balance. So, this was a thinking of way back then. And this began to develop a little bit more because we're thinking about this balance. And you think, well, is it just hard and soft? Is it just unbroken or broken? If you read the I Ching, you know what that reference is. Um, or is it a bit more? So hard can be strong, uh, light as in sunlight, hard, strong, light, sharp, excitable. So instead of just having this is strong, now you have a concept of all the things that can fit into this kind of category. And similarly, yin. Is it just soft? Hmm. Is it weak? Is it quiet, calm, dark? 
So over time, the idea of yin and yang just became words that broadened all sorts of categories. You're too much one side, you're too much the other side. Let's get a balance between the two. If you begin to think about it, you can get almost everything into yin or yang. Think about it. Um, male and female. Usually male is yang, female is yin. Right and left. This is my right hand. <laughs> yang, yin, and so on, and so on. So you can go like this. You can go around the world. In fact, um, we'll do you a quiz and you can... You can decide where you put your things in your categories. Now, interestingly, um, it isn't all that long, although it seemed to take centuries in China. It's not all that long you're doing this exercise before you start to think, well, it's not yin, it's not yang. It's a kind of, it can be one or the other, or it's kind of somewhere in the middle. And so um, usually, Yin, black, yang, white. Then you have all the shades of grey. It's not about being black or white. It's about being somewhere in the middle. Okay, so this, this begins to develop and over centuries people start to talk more in these terms. Um, the philosophers amongst you we're talking a relativist. Okay. A thousand years after Confucius was alive, there comes the diagram. So that symbol I'm talking about, it came a thousand years after Confucius. Yin and Yang were there all of this time, and then there's the symbol. Wow, where did it come from? The symbol was designed as part of a philosophical movement, which in China was called the Tao Shui, and which in the West has been known as Neo-Confucianism. Now, this wasn't really Confucianism. It was a kind of, let's go back to basics, let's explore everything, but let's not forget that there's people who aren't Confucian. They may be Taoist, they may be Buddhist. Let's see what we can get put everything together and try to get a single idea, a single idea. Now, in this single idea, and this whole concept came to dominate Far Eastern thought, well, uh, for sev many hundreds of years, certainly uh, four or five hundred years, it was the dominant thought. And in the, this, which we know as Neo-Confucianism, the idea was, to begin with, there is stillness, emptiness, nothing. Wuchi, the beginning state, arriving. And after Wuchi, you begin to get a splitting, just like you might have seen the way that cells replicate. Splitting into two. You could say yin and yang. Okay, beginning to split into two, but this is where it gets much more interesting because at this point, there's an idea that, well, nothing stands still. Maybe everything is moving, everything is changing all the time. Now, by this time, Buddhism had been in China for a long time, arriving in the early centuries of so, uh, the first and second century AD. So um, it had been around a long time, and a very powerful do doctrine in Buddhism is the doctrine of impermanence. Everything is changing. Nothing stays the same. So... Bringing all this together in this uh, Neo-Confucian uh, syncretism, trying to put everything together, comes the idea that maybe it's not yin and yang, but maybe yin is always becoming yang and yang is always becoming yin. Do you see how the two sides 
are starting to slot together. And what if by the time you get to Yang, you already have the seeds of a movement to yin within you. So this is the diagram. You're growing from your tail of not being very big. You're growing to a big part. And in, but already in the big part, the seeds of the next part are there. You're moving from the small to the big and over to the other side. You were light and now you're dark. You were dark and you're becoming to light. So day becomes night, night becomes day. Even before the end of the night, you can tell that the dawn is coming. So this is the Tai Chi. Um, this is where Tai Chi fits in. This Tai Chi is describing this process and yin and yang is just part of it. The more modern thinking of yin and yang, not the static. So when you're thinking of being balanced, you're not being balanced in terms of standing on top of a, of um, like a seesaw, trying to balance both sides and stay still. No, it's more like you're going with the flow, you're relaxing with the current and you're just not trying to fight it. You're just allowing yourself to go with it. You know that you go this way, you'll eventually come back this way, like the tides go in and out. So how does this affect your Tai Chi? Well, there's another piece of thinking um, which had come from that uh, time of Confucius and developed through and was in the Neo-Confucian thought. And this thinking is something called Li, often uh, translated as patterns or uh, principles. And it is that the world, the universe, everything is filled with these principles. So, to be in harmony, you must balance yin and yang. But how do you do that? How do you go with the flow? Because you need to know what the flow is. You seek patterns in the world. Look at the diagram again. What's a beautiful pattern? Immediately evident, the pattern is of spiral. You can see spiraling in that diagram. Look for the patterns. If you understand the concept of flow, the concept of impermanence, and you just accept them, if you make your body go with the flow and move in ways which fit the Li, then you will be in harmony. Why is this important in the art that is now Tai Chi? Because the martial art was around. It wasn't called Tai Chi. It stole the name from the diagram. Sorry, I'm sure loads of people will be offended by that, but that's the way that it happened. Why did this martial art call itself Tai Chi? Because it had this in it. It saw that it was this. It said, OK, that's what we are. Let's call ourselves it. So Tai Chi, this. When you move, your aim is to fit spiraling and flow. Now, back to the early concepts of yin and yang. If you think about your Tai Chi, you've got both in there. So I turn to my side and I do a movement, which is uh, look in the mirror. Yang, bang, powerful, strong, sharp. And then I roll back, soft, gentle, withdrawing, yang, yin. Now, in order to develop a flow, you need to find and emphasize the yang and the yin without forgetting that you're always going to be flowing back to the other. So if you overdo it, you end up stuck in one side and not the other. So I want to go yang, but I don't want to go yang and then get stuck, can't get back to yin. And similarly the other way. So I want to go yang, yin. Now, very clever people at Tai Chi, people with a lot of experience, they can take this a bit further than that. 
in that they can experience the feeling of the flow from yang to yin and back internally. That is, I can't show you it because it's inside, but when, uh, let's say if I do this, I can see that it is what you might call a yang posture, but I can feel it, I can make myself experience it as a yin posture by getting the yin feeling inside me to dominate. So I was going to show you and then I thought, that's no use, you can't tell. So very experienced people, they play with the yin and yang all the time in the way that they feel, in the way that they think, and they allow it to flow and they actually manipulate that flow. And they do it in a way that gets themselves the best harmony that they can find something in your head, that is how you're conceiving of things, something in the way you move and something in the way you feel. These bring you back to the diagram of Tai Chi, the flow and the flow between yin and yang and it puts you in to that harmony.